Well, congratulations if you made it this far. We're on the part right now from the previous videos where we're going to go ahead and start making our bricks. And so this is where it actually becomes more like an actual game where we can interact with bricks and remove the bricks and we got our game going. So congratulations on that. So let's hurry up and let's go ahead and get started on this. Uh, the one thing I want to point out, though, is that now that we're making our bricks, we have to slow down and really think about what we're doing, especially when we start creating bricks using our, you know, our our loops. Uh, because that's basically what we're going to be doing. Um, I have this diagram here that kind of shows where we have these bricks here, each one laid out on the x-axis, which makes the columns, and then we have our y-axis, which makes the height of the bricks. So every time the ball hits one of these bricks, it's hitting a rectangle. Now, what makes these rectangles different from this rectangle down here? Well, nothing really. Uh, if I create code that says using the, the technology that we're using right now to, for our collision detection because we didn't really create the, the collision detection from scratch. We used some technologies that are in WPF to be able to determine whether this rectangle hit another rectangle, another UI element. So we're utilizing the technology that's there in order to do that. So we have to really um, do things a little bit differently, but a bit more efficiently because the system is actually allowing our game to move more smoothly. Now, because of that, we're detecting whether this ball hits a rectangle. So if we say when it hits a rectangle, the rectangle disappears, that means when it hits the pad, the, pad, the paddle will disappear. So the way we can tell the difference between this rectangle and this rectangle is by using tags. So we're going to have a tag, and we're going to call that tag bricks. That's going to be our tag. So each time it hits a brick rectangle, then it'll disappear. And if it doesn't hit a brick rectangle, then it's going to revert. It's going to reverse its uh, course. So that's uh, great news that we have those tags to work with. So that's what we're looking for. All right, so now let's go back to the code. In the previous video, we already got our game running. Right, so we have this game moving around. We get to move this ball around and then block it. And we also have this angle thing going there. And I showed you guys the, the calculation from that. That's, that's something I got to fix right there. And I already know how we can fix that. That little, let me see if I can do it again. We just found a bug when you hit it at an angle. So let me put a note here. I know exactly where this needs to be fixed. It needs to be fixed over here. So I'm going to put a note here. All right. So now that I have this to do here, I can now go to my task list and I can see here's my to do list and my to do list is to fix that bug. If I double click on that, it'll send me right to that area to fix it. So I don't have to deal with it right now and lose my train of thought. I can fix it later. So now I'm going to go focus on creating everything for my my bricks and I'm going to create it exactly the same way I created the ball. Go go ahead and dim myself a private. I need the width, and that's going to be that's an integer. And then I'm going to need the height. The next thing we're going to need are the bricks, the columns, and the rows, just like we talked about in that diagram. So I'm going to need the brick, column, and brick rows. That should be capitalized up there in plural. In plural. So right now, we're going to just going to automatically set these to four for now. So we're going to have four columns and four rows, and then, yeah, this this would be good. We may need some sort of gap between those, but let's let's try it this way first. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and create my draw bricks procedure. So 
the way I really like to do this, okay, so normally, you know, what you saw before is we would make the procedure, right? But normally what I really like to do is I like to go ahead and put it in, put the procedure where I think it's going to be. I want it here because I need to draw those bricks when the program first starts. So I'm going to type draw bricks. And actually, I don't want that all capital. Draw bricks. I'm going to do camel casing. So now that I have my draw bricks here, and you see it's red, so obviously we don't have a draw big bricks uh, procedure, but I do have it where I know I want it to work. Now I can go down here and I can go ahead and create my draw bricks. And I want that near all the other draw stuff, so I don't want to just place that anywhere. So here's the draw ball. I'm going to go ahead and go right here. And I'm going to put that right there. Now all we got to do is type out our our draw bricks, we want it to be a for loop because we want it to be, we want that to go from zero to rows. So to however many rows we're gonna we're gonna make. So actually from, from zero to we're gonna start off with zero to columns, which will be the x axis. We're gonna go zero to columns. So let's see how we can do that. We're gonna say four and then instead of index, I'm gonna put column for columns equals zero two and I want this to go to the bricks column the brick columns so right here we're going to demo ourselves a brick variable and that's going to equal a new rectangle Now that brick will have a height. So the brick that height will equal brick height, what we talked about earlier, and the brick width will equal And I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a like a stroke around that. Um, yeah, let me put a stroke around that. And put a thickness, thickness, and we'll make that equal um, something like two. And then. Um, now we have to go ahead and place this brick someplace. So we have to use the render transform. So brick dot render transform. And we're going to place it with a new transform translate transform. And we're going to put that, we'll, we'll set it up at zero, zero, something like that. And so now I need to just add it to the canvas. So I'm gonna say main canvas that children that add and I'm gonna say brick. No. Now you'll notice um, I can't add this brick to the canvas. The reason why I can't add this brick to the canvas is because this brick right here is inside of this for loop. So here's that brick is inside the for loop. So the only place I can add this brick into the canvas is inside this for loop. So basically what I need to do is I need to take this and put it inside that loop and now I can access that brick. So now when I run it, I should have a brick up there. 
at I set the brick columns and brick rows, but I didn't set the width and the height of the the brick. So I think um, a pretty good width and height for that should be maybe 100, 100, and maybe 25. So that should work. Let's run that. We have ourselves a brick. <clears throat> and, but actually, we have a lot of bricks here. We just haven't pushed them over. And we haven't told the ball what to do when it collides with these rectangles here. So <clears throat> that's what we were talking about earlier, and we'll solve that in a second. But let's go ahead and see how we can push these bricks over to the other side. So. We have all these bricks being drawn, but they're being drawn in one spot. So basically what's happening is that we have this loop over here from 0 to 4, <clears throat> or bricks column. And it's drawing each one of those bricks in the exact same spot every time. What we need to do is move over one. And how far we want to move over? Well, we want to move over the width of each brick. So 100 over here on the first iteration, and then... 100 over here on the second iteration, third. So look at these numbers. Basically, we're saying we want to multiply the width of the brick by the iteration, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, <clears throat> 4 to be able to determine the x column, the x axis. So that way we can move the brick over. So basically, here's where we're translating everything. And I'm going to put that back to 0. So basically, we're saying the x value right here needs to be two things. It needs to be the brick width. And we want to multiply that by the column that we're on. So here's the column that we're on. And here's the brick width that we're calculating. So now what we should see is that the brick moves over. And there it is. You see the brick up there? It's going crazy because we didn't tell it what to do with it. But uh, basically, we have that brick going across. We just need some gaps in between that brick. So uh, I think what we need, I, I figured we were going to need this before. Um, I didn't want it to look like a, some long thing there. So I'm going to make a variable called brick gap. I'm going to give that a value of 1. And there should be no E in there. Sorry. All right. So now um, we're going to subtract that from the width. There we go. So now when I run it, you see we have these gaps there. And um, we basically can do the same thing with the height since we're here. Take this brick gap. So after doing that, even though we can't really see a difference because we only have one row, uh, there is a gap that's going to happen after each brick is drawn. All right, so now our next step is to get another row. So we have our bricks being drawn with this our columns you know we have our columns being drawn so we have this column and all the way over here being drawn and what you'll notice is that even though we put four columns we're getting five because really this number four is the fifth basically because of the zero here zero one two three four is what we're going to get um, now we need to be able to go down one, and the way we went across is the same way we go down. This was a for loop, and going down needs to be a for loop. So the first thing I wanted to show you here is that we have our columns here, which is four, but when we put it inside of that loop, we start that loop off at zero. So we're going to get an extra one in there. So when I run this, You'll notice I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because of the 0, which is fine. So when I put 4, I want it 5. Now all I need to do here is add another for loop here. 
uh, but it's going to be a nested for loop, and that's going to be for the rows. So right above here, I'm going to say four rows. And, and row, and this is not rows, this is a row, will equal zero to brick rows. There's a number of brick rows that we want. Now we have our for loop here and we have our for loop here. Now this one right here, I'm going to take this next and I'm going to bring it all the way down here so it it consumes this for loop. Now we have the capability of making our rows. And the same thing we did with the brick width and the columns, we're going to do with the brick height. We're going to multiply that by the row. I put that as rows, columns here. This probably shouldn't be columns. It probably should be column singular. And this is row. So now we have our row and we have our columns. And now what we should be able to see is multiple layer of bricks. And we already put our gap there, so we don't have to worry about anything from there. So when I run this, you'll see we have multiple layer of bricks. Awesome. Our game is coming along. Now the only thing we need to do here <coughs> is start worrying about our collision detection. So we're going to do that in the next video. This video has already gone too long. I'll see you guys then. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share this video. Leave any comments you have in the comment section below.